Welcome to episode three of the Laced Up Show, the show all about sneakers and sneaker news. I'm your host, Chase, with my co-host today, Landon, and we have a jam-packed episode like always with you. But first, I just wanted to say happy Thanksgiving to all the that celebrate, and hopefully you had a great Thanksgiving. But let's just get into it. So starting off with the very first article, women exclusive basketball shoes, the Moolah Kicks have just released. So Moolah Kicks is the new basketball sneaker brand providing basketball shoes specifically designed for women. Moolah is founded by Boston College's Natalie White, and she's taking her kicks nationwide. So last Friday, more than 140 Dick Sporting Goods retail stores and online began selling Moolah Kicks. These kicks feature a high arch design with a slimmer uh, width and heel. So after a seven-figure investment from a venture capital firm, White has been able to deliver over 10,000 pairs to Dicks with each pair selling at $110. So Landon, what are your thoughts on Moolah Kicks and are they thinking of like are they going to be able to compete with the name brands such as Nike and Adidas? It's definitely an interesting thought. Uh, I know that one thing is a lot of women's basketball shoes have kind of been phased out it's pretty much just gone all over to men's and women's just wear men's basketball design shoes right in whatever their sizing would be that's how it's been for the most part it's kind of cool to see something like this though because you know i mean th- obviously you she doesn't get the grant like that and like the loan and all this different stuff and have dick start selling her shoes if it's not a good product right. so you got to imagine it's a pretty good product i honestly this is the first that i've heard or seen you know, anything about it before you brought this up. So I hadn't really, you know, I think the, that the hardest thing with something like that to me is going to be getting your name out there. Mm. It's like, I personally haven't heard the name yet. And I, what do you am think in sports name? a lot. Moolah, honestly, it's kind of cool. You like it? It's kind of nice. <laughs> it's got a good ring to it. So I, I'd be interested to see what their, uh, I mean, I guess I can, can see the photos a little bit here, kind of what their branding looks like. It's definitely a pretty simple pretty design. Basic. Yeah. I mean, pretty simple design. I guess you got to play it safe for your very first model. Resembles Puma just a little bit in really? my head. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool thought. There's plenty, obviously, there's going to be plenty of girls out there that are going to be wanting to, uh, wanting to and needing basketball shoes all the time. It's just, right. it's weird because a little bit of a shift had started to happen from, you know, I feel like I don't know this for a fact, but just, I guess now that I'm more invested in shoes and stuff, I feel like more people are into like signature shoes and stuff like that than it used to be. Like used to be basic, like whenever I was in high school, everyone was wearing like basic True. shoe models and stuff like that. And now everyone wants to rock the newest, like, you know, PGs, right. KDs, Kyries, LeBrons, just different stuff like that. I didn't see that as much whenever I was in high school. So I just wonder what it's going to be uh, like trying to kind of create your own brand in this market. So I guess a follow-up question that I just thought of is, you know, because it's a woman, it's exclusive basketball shoe. Who's going to be the first person that they're going to go for to sign for a PE? That's, that's where I think Moolah can actually get some Moolah. That's really, geez, that's really (laughs) like the, uh, that's really like the only, I don't want to say like shot that they have because I don't know enough about the whole situation yet. Uh, and what they have going on, obviously they have enough to kind of get their name and stuff off the ground, but that would be a big, obviously it's a big thing. That's kind of how Puma started to make their splash back in the market is like signing all these, like, I don't want to say, uh, would like taking a chance on some of these draft picks and the uh and like signing them at a young age because you know the prestige the more prestigious like brands like nike and jordan and stuff like that they'll wait make you yeah. develop see that you've proven yourself and then hey do you want to come sign with us it's not normally like first person out of the draft like no. which really the only person they do that often with is like who got it zion Zion was was, fast was crazy fast but look at what's happened to him even i mean like he hasn't even played a game yet this year so i think that's going to be where like the next step can be for this i'll have to look into it a little bit more but the idea is nice because i can't i can't really think of a brand out there that just that just sells women's basketball shoes Mm -hmm. like that only sells women's basketball shoes so there might be a little bit of a market there 110 is pretty affordable i'd i mean i have to see what type of what type of cushioning and stuff like that it's definitely bad either not a bad look yeah i mean i think I mean, I don't know. I mean, we might honestly pull the trigger and try to review them if we can find a if it fits your. Yeah, I, yeah. I wonder. I wonder what the sizing will look like. Right. I mean, because you know, this. I mean, they're gonna need to have at least some sort of extended well, sizing. I, I just I wonder what it'll go the, to. I think the sizing went all the way up to like. 15 or 15 in women yeah. yeah that's i mean yeah. you need to have that obviously you don't want to be that's the last thing you want is to be cutting off a certain exactly. portion of your 
you know, uh, target audience. But yeah, no, it's definitely interesting. I wonder, I wonder how that's going to shake out. That's a, that's a pretty cool story. Yeah. But Landon, what do we got next? All right. So, yeah. So our next story, I'm pretty, I'm pretty intrigued by this. So we got the Swarovski and Nike's next sneaker collab comes with a screwdriver. So Nike and Swarovski have been releasing crystal covered Air Max 97 collabs for quite some time now. And it looks like the shimmery look is coming to another classic model. Official Nike product images show two iterations of what is said to be the Swarovski Nike Air Force One Low. So before I say anything else, I don't know if you've seen this design yet, but, you know, what are your first impressions for this new Nike Air Force One that comes with some some crystals that you can screw in and screw out of the shoe? I mean, they come with a screwdriver. It, it's definitely different i mean we've gotten swarovski products in the past we've gotten the, like the air max 97s and and stuff like that and they look beautiful in hand the and crystals are always nice but it's always built into the shoe right. this is a little an option this is a little different i don't know how much of an option it is i mean looking at the photos i mean it it looks like almost all of it is unscrewable well so basically the way that it works is like you're gonna have these crystal this this whole white piece comes off oh, so okay. you can screw it onto the design you take it off and it just kind of looks like a white air force so where the screw sections are and all those overlays it goes onto the shoe and it comes off the shoe so are they just holes i guess kind of holes in the shoe so i mean you'd be able to tell the one thing on here is that there's no swarovski branding on the air force Really? The Swarovski branding is the like overlay, the the crystal uh, okay. design cover. There's no like additional branding and stuff That's on there. Very so interesting. I think. Well, also like, I mean, I don't know if it's just a money grab because like the last Swarovskis that we got, it was just an Air Max 97. Now, granted, the it was covered in crystals, but right. it was also five hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, or four hundred dollars, four hundred dollar retail so price. So I don't know what these are going for. I don't know what these are going for. I mean, it's not gonna be ninety bucks. No, there's no way. I don't know. Oh no no no! I, it comes with the screwdriver. It comes like with the weapon. I would love to see what the screwdriver looks. The like. screwdriver is really tiny. It's, it's oh, not. It's not. Nah, it's not big. Oh, it's not, it's not like a. I don't. It's a screwdriver. Right. But it's not like. It's cool. A screwdriver. I, I think, think it's, it's a, a cool, flathead screwdriver. And I these, a, I think it's a cool concept. I, I don't, I don't know if I'd rock it. It kind of looks like I know you wouldn't weapon. rock it. Oh yeah. I know you wouldn't rock that. <laughs> There's no way. I just thought it's really intriguing it's that very like I, I, I like that. Though. I want to see some photos and stuff. I I haven't looked uh, into it like super extensively, but I wonder what it looks like with the cover off. Exactly. How much of just like a white air? Because you got to have something, and the hole's got to be decent enough to be able to screw into and keep the design keep the crystal cover on there mm -hmm. so i just i just feel like this is something that could be a really a really sweet design it's definitely going to be you know out there but there's plenty of shoe designs that are kind of you know out there you know what i'm interested in is because nike has kind of made it so it's kind of like like a modular kind of setup where like you can unscrew a few things you can kind of tweak it how you like i wonder what like sneaker customers customers customizers are going to do with it and see if they can make their own kind of overlays and screw them into the air oh. force that'd be kind of tough yeah I, what kind of technology are they using i want i just want to know what these like holes look like what these screw holes right. look like in the shoe kind of how they how they because it looks like for the most part they only screw into the midsole but i, I do see a top. screw kind of up top on the upper two okay, so i mean you, i see one on the heel tab i don't know it but also like uh, I mean, how are some for show or some actual screws? I mean, some That's, of them could be buttons. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's an interesting idea. Sure. I just thought that, you know, Swarovski, they put out some really clean stuff. But I think it is weird. Like the Swarovski branding never really shows up on your stuff. Like you get the Swarovski is the the crystals is right. what the Swarovski right. is. Like even on this shoe, there's, I mean, it's said to be there's no Swarovski branding. So aside from the you know, obviously crystals that are going to give it away. But without that screw on, it's not like it says Swarovski kind of covered all over the shoe. Mm -hmm. You know, different brands like to do their different stuff. Like Sakai kind of puts the, makes their uh, branding known in a few right. different places. Right. So I guess it's just kind of your preference yeah, definitely on that. an interesting shoe for sure. But yeah. moving on, let's look at Vans is now suing Walmart over knockouts. Now, the skateboarding shoemaker Vans is suing Walmart last Monday over selling copycat versions of more than 20 versions of its shoes. Now, this isn't the first time that Nike, or not Nike, that Walmart has gotten some heat because I think this year as well, Yeezy did sue Walmart for selling knockoffs of their foam runners models. So, Landon, what are your thoughts on, you know, this entire article? It's pretty short, but I mean, what are your thoughts on 
you know, knockoffs in general? Is is Walmart kind of okay with doing that? Is there a certain limit that they're doing it? You know, what are your thoughts on this? I think Walmart's just, I mean, obviously, you know, Nike, Nike and Adidas is kind of a tough thing because they put out some of the more premier models. Right. And I always say, like, I don't, every time, every time a new model that comes out, that I really like, which really doesn't happen that often. But every time it happens, I'm just like, I'm amazed that someone was able to create that model. Cause in my head, like what else is out there? You know, we've been making shoes for so long. That's why there's, in my opinion, that's why there's so many retros is because, you know, we've kind of found out what looks good and what doesn't. Right. So we just kind of go back and we repeat it. You make different colorways for it. You do different stuff like that. It's kind of the whole purpose of that. So like selling knockoffs in general, I mean, I don't like the idea that you can profit off someone's name, especially whenever it's like big on big, like whenever it's a big giant like Walmart True. and a big giant like Nike, you know, two, I don't want to say like top, I guess top tiers in their own like retail type of industries and stuff like that. So it's not like one of them is like feeding off of the other in my eyes. The only thing is, Walmart can knock something off from Nike. Nike can never knock anything off from Walmart. So it's right. like Walmart can kind of like do right. this stuff knowing there's no backlash. Right. Like what's what is Ni what is Nike going to rip off right. from Walmart? Mm. Literally nothing. So Walmart does have this whole selling like cheaper cheaper stuff and uh, I mean obviously being a more affordable place uh especially for like clothing and shoes and different stuff like that because they don't yeah. sell they, they sell more of the and ones and not mm -hmm. like the nikes the jordans the adidas stuff like that so yeah. i think it's it's definitely an interesting uh I, I mean you see nike getting into you know all these different lawsuits it's just so crazy everyone wants to be nike it's, it's get it's getting heated i guess with vans and walmart uh yeah i think i think you know, i haven't seen any saying? of these though um, i think i maybe remember seeing the foam runners yeah, I saw I a little bit of a, I don't cool. know what they're, I mean, I, I'm not, but I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't been to the Walmart shoe section in a minute, but like, I wouldn't be surprised for sure. Yeah. Uh, I have, I haven't seen them in, in hand or at least at my local Walmart, but, uh, definitely it was pretty interesting that they were selling the, like, I guess pretty close knockoffs for like 20 bucks compared to like $60 vans. So I mean, hopefully, uh, close knockoffs to Vans. Yeah, th that's what Walmart was selling. Yeah, I think. I mean, I've seen plenty of shoes that, like, even whenever I was in high school, I'd go to Walmart and get like some white ones yeah. that looked like Vans because yeah. you can like customize yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what a lot of people yeah. will do. So like that's, whenever they that's start what they're doing over. So hopefully, Van I I get it. I think I think definitely Walmart's in the uh, gonna get some heat. Hopefully, uh, Vans actually wins that because I don't like Vans getting hurt from that. But moving on, I'm actually excited for this next article, Landon. So. Tell them what we got. All right, yeah. So this is a really this is a really cool article. So Nike teams up with Roblox to create virtual Nike land. So Nike's latest collaboration isn't one you can physically physically obtain. Instead, the sportswear brand has teamed up with online game Roblox to create a virtual world for players called Nike Land, where users can connect with others to create, share experiences, and compete for prizes. So while this predominantly is a virtual experience, players will be able to use like Excel accelerometers in their uh, mobile devices which can kind of transfer into in-game moves like long jumps or speed runs so you know what do you think about this news and what do you kind of expect this experience like this whole thing nike and roblox to look like well it's kind of interesting that this news article kind of came up because like in episode one i brought up that you know nike is getting into the digital Meta the yeah metaverse the metaverse and stuff like that so right. this is definitely baby steps and you, I was, I wanted to do this article, but you stole it from me. Beat you to it. And I was reading into it, and I mean, there's, there's even talks. Nike's already patented, um, or not patented, but copyrighted. You know, they're ready. They're gonna start selling virtual stuff through Roblox. So it's gonna be very interesting to see. You know, this is a little baby step. They're kind of getting into the market with, with Roblox. I'm not really a fan, or not a fan, but not really. Uh, the person that plays roblox so i would be interested to see what it kind of looks like i get so basically there. yeah so basically for that i guess they say you can compete in different mini games right. like tag the floor is lava dodgeball and more you can win blue ribbons and gold medals like for competing building and collecting okay. and i think you can kind of like upgrade your character uh like within the game and i guess the last last point on this for me before i turn it back over to you uh to talk about it is like nike kind of revealed that like some of the areas are going to resemble the real headquarters in beaverton oregon so like they are like I, I was looking at some of the photos and just different stuff it's a really cool look yeah like it looks like it's going to be pretty sweet it's like mikey nike minecraft it's yeah. kind of what it looked like i think i mean i think it's this is the next step i mean eventually it's going to get more and more into it and i'm glad nike's kind of pushing pushing the uh innovation over it because 
I'm kind of interested to see what Adidas and Puma are going to respond to this as well as I'm just ready for the very first digital sneaker. I'm so ready for it. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know they're, they're, they're definitely gearing up for it, but I don't think any, I don't, I just don't, I feel like that's your giveaway. Your telltale sign that you're not like the highest tier sneakerhead is that you're just so pumped for this digital sneaker. Well, because I just want to see how, how the behavior of like consumers or who it's going to attract to, or is there going to be resale market? Like, it's just like such a new age. How do you resell a digital copy? That's what's crazy to me. People are doing it already. Reselling nft stuff like that all right okay it's massive okay. i mean people are making thousands and thousands of dollars so now like you know it's bringing like if nike can actually sell something physical or digital i mean and it's it's like the next new age it's the it, that's like the final bridge because everything right now has been digitalized and it's been different it's like you know monkeys or you know it's like nfts are so out there and they're just pictures and there's like artwork but like if nike came in and made a shoe like a shoe's like all right like it's a physical item so right. if going into digital is like that's the bridge that we need so it it's that's a very exciting article i can't wait to see what happens <laughs> any, any last uh thoughts on that article? no i mean it's just it, i'm i'm really interested to see kind of how it turns out yeah. i mean they gave they gave some pretty like Descript, uh, pretty informative like uh, sentences and descriptions on what it's going to look like yeah. and they even have some pictures so you know obviously it's in the works it's already been in the works and stuff yeah. like that so I mean it'll be interesting to kind of see how it shakes up but yeah moving on you know let's just talk about how also in the future is recyclable footwear of physical footwear is the future so every year over 23 billion that's right with a b pairs of sneakers are manufactured and over 300 million of those pairs are tossed tossed out and uh, wind up in the landfills so consumers today are becoming more and more aware of how sustainable fashion and clothing can be and it's becoming a priority for consumers. So you've seen companies already like Nike and Adidas have come out with shoes, you know, that's saying like a portion of the shoe have been made in recyclable materials. But now there's a company called Sneaker Impact that is taking a different approach by instead of grinding up the shoes and actually using them in new shoes, the old shoes, they're actually just rerouting the old used shoes from landfills where they're thrown away and redistribute them to the people that need them, either in homeless shelters or in developing countries. So Landon, you know, which would you prefer knowing about your used sneakers? Would you either have them be donated to be grinded up and used into a different sneaker or have it be reused to someone like in a third world country or something like that? I mean, you know, it's kind of a... It's kind of a win-win situation. It's, I mean, you just want it to be used in some type of positive way once you're right. not using it anymore. It's actually kind of interesting that you pulled this article up because I was looking into something that I almost did that was similar, where these people were uh, kind of tampering around with the idea of infusing uh, like biodegradable materials and uh, like tree seeds into your shoes. So whenever your shoes uh -huh. get thrown away and tossed out, it'll like uh, sprout a tree. So like obviously, you know, there were hiccups with that with shoes to go to a, you know, shoes can only you know germinate in certain type of like right, environments and stuff like that right. so if you like throw your shoes in the trash they end up in a landfill the tree's not going to grow right, there because right. it's got to be in the right conditions for a certain amount of time for a certain right. length of period no, getting, yeah exactly so that's basically what they were going to have to do but that's kind of along the lines that they were that some people were trying to go and this is the you know the same type of idea just trying to get something out of a product once it's no longer being fully used the way that you intended it for so i guess if i had to choose i would probably want my sneakers going to someone who would want and need them because that's what i'm saying yeah i mean that's that's just kind of how i feel about it there's mm -hmm. so many other things that we're recycling and you know there's going to be plenty of like using recycled materials in shoes that i don't think it hurt to free up a second option like to just right. send them away instead because like like you said i mean nike already is using 20 percent recycled material 90 percent recycled box just different stuff like that mm -hmm. and you know a lot of other brands are starting to do the same thing yep. we've, we've begun to see that so i mean i just feel like honestly for me definitely having it go to you know someone else but recyclable footwear is definitely definitely what we're starting to see and we're kind of running running out of time right. we gotta so i mean obviously you know, taking care of the of the environment is going to be something that needs to be at the forefront. But I don't think that there'd be any issue with. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't take issue with that. From my when I was reading the article, it's actually a pretty long article. But I, I my approach was why couldn't they do both? Like, why couldn't they offset, 
you know, give them to the third world countries or, you know, really maximize and redistribute them, redistribute them to the people that are in developing countries. And then once those people are done with them, then we can recycle them. Like instead of like skipping that step, like, I don't, but maybe it's also like the wear and tear, like if it's that worn and that used up, like it just becomes dust. So I don't know, but it is pretty cool. Like I am seeing that, you know, these big brands are listening to consumers and it should be interesting to see how far it, it evolves to, you know, seeing that a hundred percent recyclable sneaker where you actually, not, instead of throwing it in the trash, you throw it in the recycling bin when you're done. Having, having That's, just a sneaker recycling bin. Right. That's gonna be crazy, but Moving on, uh, Landon, what do we got next? All right, so for this one, we got Curry Brand enters the running space with the Curry Flow Go. So Stephen Curry and Under Armour have partnered to produce a lightweight, high-performance running shoe known as Curry Brand's Curry Brand Curry Flow Go. So although Stephen Curry is not a runner, he still manages to log more than 2.5 miles per game, which is nearly eight marathons per season. So the Curry Brand Curry Flow Go leverages a modified UA Flow midsole, similar to the technology from the curry flow nine but slightly tweaked for optimal running performance so you know what do you think about stephen curry kind of expanding his brand with under armor into more of like the running shoe department opposed from just being in basketball see personally this is my hot take i think it's a horrible idea oh no i really don't think i'm not I, set up to I, like I, this take I, go ahead Let's i'm hear telling it. you i think under armor is this is just a money grab and they're just making money off of curry's name first of all number one what is Curry's Curry? an icon? Curry is an icon okay. for what sport? For basketball. Exactly. It has nothing to do with running. So people are not going to. So the only way this shoe works or this idea works, if the shoe is good and no one cares about what's on the logo of the hand, people are going to be like, what? What is that? Oh, I don't even know that it's an Under Armour shoe because it's a Curry shoe. So it's you're always going to have his fan base because me personally, I'm getting these shoes. So okay. like that's one person down, okay. and I'm one of I don't know how right. many Curry okay, fans, but, but there's a lot. But okay, there's that many Curry fans, All right? Okay, but how many people play basketball, wear Curries, but don't run? See, here's my thing with it though. My thing with it is that Curry is the perfect of all of any athlete to get a running shoe. Stephen Curry is a perfect athlete, okay? Because he is constant. He is like the he is like the I don't even know what you want to call it. Just the epitome of running in basketball running constantly staying in condition to play your sport he literally runs what, what did you just said 2.5 right. miles a game but 28 what, what whatever saying? however many air, marathons a year that. Like, that. but what is he running in he's running in a basketball shoe yeah but he's got a tra no no that, that <laughs> doesn't work though because he's got to train you don't just go out on the basketball court and perform and, and no, then a lot of basketball right. players don't just go play basketball to get better at basketball. You got to, you got to work out Obviously. and you got to run in same condition. What are you wearing during those times? The Curry brand, Curry okay. go flow. So Under Armour does the same type of thing with the rock. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pump it a little back then. Okay. Is this shoe specifically for running or is it more of a trainer style shoe? Is this a specifically for running? Okay. Then they lost me again. You had me, you lost no, me. No, because and you lost me again. The, okay, well, first off, people will pay for a good product. The True. curry the curry nine. But they could have just made the this curry, under armor go well, flow. Well, no, here's the thing. It can't be go flow because that's curry stuff. It's the curry flow. So what makes this shoe so great is what is is Stephen Curry's specific stuff. Right, so the curry go the curry flow nine and the curry flow eight. I haven't actually got to check out the nine yet, but the Curry Flow Eight is amazing. So one of the most comfortable yeah. shoes I've ever yeah, worn. Right. We got it right here. One of the most comfortable shoes ever. It ha you can look at the outsole. Look at the outsole. It's the same exact pattern. It takes the same exact idea. They modified it to for, to fit more of a running, uh, more of a runner's type of setup. But I mean, let me see here. I'll just read you this. What I wrote down. So a few goals for this shoe that Under Armour had was to make a model that felt great for both Steph and all the consumers to run in, and second was making a sleek or fast design. So, I mean, definitely a sleek design to the model if you look at it. It's even got some cool details, right? This is this is where you uh, wrap in all of the Curry fans. All the four dots that are on the side of the shoe stand for his wife and his three kids. This guy is all about family. He's the <laughs> okay. best shooter of all time. I would not know that, though. That's what, that's we, that's what, the, that's what I'm here for. Grab. It's it. not. It's literally not a money grab. I don't agree with that because I think this is going to be a really good product. I don't think it's going to do. So. It's not going to be crazy. But the thing it's is, not going to be like. I think. But how else is Under Armour going to get into their own? Like I don't think their running stuff is all that. 
true. Doesn't have that much attention, exactly. so it'll draw more attention to the running. But I mean, you couldn't sign a runner and then make a runner. Maybe they could. Maybe they couldn't. They had to go. And it get doesn't a matter. It's not player. a runner. It's got to be well known. We're talking well, right. well known. Right. I don't know any well known runners just because that's not like but a. That's exactly right because you're not a runner. No, but you're a basketball player. So it's weird to have a basketball player on a runner. What well known runner do you know that's signed with Nike? That's why I don't buy runner shoes. I don't All run. Right. I don't need to know. So you know? Can, I get that. That part does kind of track back. Okay, look, look. All right, signed with Nike, right? I don't know any Nike shoe that has an exclusive deal with a runner, but they still make running shoes. This is someone that they signed. That, but that's what I'm saying. They, they didn't even have to go out and sign anyone. They just Mike. took Stephen Curry. They right. took his name and they went you ahead. Don't see a LeBron running shoe. You, don't you see, see, but you don't. You see, like LeBron casual shoes. Right. LeBron does have some casual. But this is this if is. If they're marketing as a performance running shoe, my hot take is, it's a money grab. I don't think like you. Mm, I don't know. Buy it. I probably am gonna buy it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying, gonna. It's actually available right saying. now. I'm just not buying this color because I think they'll have some better ones I'm come just out. But saying, I think, I th I don't know if the only way it if they had to do it where. Because somehow Curry is connected to the Flow technology, well, it and definitely... they have to, and they have to put Curry with Flow, like legally or whatever. And well, it's not—it's not, not like with. I mean, it's not like legal. It's just what they use I in know, his no, line. I'm, I know. I'm just saying, underlining like closed doors. Like if Curry has something with Flow, where Curry's name has to be involved with Flow, and they have to put it on. Like, okay, fine, Under Armour, you get like that's fine. Like it's a sleek looking athletic shoe. Right. Uh, I don't, Curry, I don't Curry or not. Curry yeah they don't That's need to put so that doesn't make that just makes it good marketing no, that just makes it good marketing. marketing no 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 because now you already have a good a shoe that's going to be good and you're going to draw in people if this is just here's what i'm saying if this is just the under armor just flow whatever it is no curry no nothing i'm not going to buy it. i'm not going to buy the shoe I, there's no reason for me right. to buy the shoe so you're going to get the people that want a running shoe that is nice that are also know. going to get that's I, a money grab that's though. That's a money grab because that's you're, you're good pushing. marketing. Yeah, but you're taking it from Curry's brand off of a, off of a basketball shoe. I don't know. I'm not a fan of it. As far as well, Curry, hopefully the shoe is good. Curry is the is the best is the best Ask, basketball player to no no player. to have right. do a running shoe. So if someone's right. gonna do it with any brand, if someone's gonna do it with any brand, it should be Under Armour. Under Armour did it. I don't have a problem with it because literally, if anyone was gonna do it, if anyone was ever gonna do it, it'd be Curry. I I mean. I guess. I, I mean, I get it. I get it. But I also don't get it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Russell, <laughs> moving on to a new shoe that makes sense. <laughs> Russell <laughs> Restbooks. Russell Restbooks Jordan Why Not 0 0.5 has been revealed. This specific colorway has been honoring his connection with his hometown with a penchant for Ad, 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 Advante Guard Day fashion and honor the gift sorry if i butchered that but <laughs> a street fashion label westbrook has started in 2016 so this zoom cushion basketball lifestyle shoe shares a similar characteristic to the why not zero and the one take lines so this is release is currently unknown right now but i would expect it to be in 2022 so landon what are your thoughts on these why not I mean, honestly, my opinion on the Why Not line is they almost all look the same. You know, I think ever since the Why Not Zero Two, so the Why Not Zero One definitely had more of like a solid upper, uh, but these ones have all kind of had like a very funky design, in my opinion. The, I, but I like it. You know, I like the shoe line. I think it's a good look. I just think they all kind of start to look a little bit too similar, in my opinion. It's not a definitely not a bad shoe to play in. Like they've done some fun things. Like they used to put the, uh, you remember when they used to put the, uh, the Nike tag on the bottom of the shoe yeah, on the heel. The they were, yeah, yeah, they kind of started yeah, doing that. That was really cool. So I mean, I thought that was a pretty sweet thing. Whenever they started kind of switching up the line that way, I think they did that for the second model. But you know, all these, all these like ones recently have kind of had that same kind of jagged design go mm -hmm. up the side of the shoe. It's got like the same overall look. So I guess I'm not surprised. They kind of. They just kind of build off each model, maybe just tweak it a little bit. I don't know how Russ is. So, you know, Russ is a very, uh, he's, he is himself. So I'm sure he wouldn't, if he liked, I could see him like, you know, kind of liking the why not zero two. It's been like, keep it kind of similar to this. Right. Keep it similar going forward. Cause that's what this whole line has kind of been like to me. But what do you think about this look? Yeah. I mean, personally, when I first saw these stock photos that came out, I think it's 
it doesn't like you said yeah it looks very similar to the the why not zero lines it's almost more casual than I expected for a performance battle. That could be the too. colorway, though. It's got a very, like, very, like, gum, like kind of cream colored colorway yeah, for these. Yeah, very casual. I do, I am going to give some credit, though, where it's due for Jordan to actually collaborate, or collaborate, <laughs> collaborate on uh, not only just giving, you know, Russell Westbrook his own PE, but also allowing his own brand to be on the shoe as well, you know, honoring the gift. I think that's a really cool touch because I don't think that's ever been done before with Russell Westbrook or just in general with Jordan athletes. So this, I think that's pretty cool. This guy's like a fashion. Oh gee, I like I, this is my word of the day icon. This guy's a fashion icon. Yeah. I mean, he really he. <laughs> it's tough for me to even say that too, because like you know, I'll, I'll wear I'll wear some more out out there stuff than you will. But I don't. I never catch myself wearing what he wears to these pre-game and post-game stuff, man. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. He's definitely. He definitely is kind of like Cam Newton. Like you'll yeah, kind of see. He's like yeah. more. He's one of the trendsetters, right? Yeah. What he's doing right now, or what he does sometimes, isn't going to be cool until maybe yeah, years out. Or, or he'll even do stuff that was cool years ago and just kind of do it now. It's yeah. one of those guys. It just doesn't really pay too much attention to anything, you know. Outside, I mean, he gets this guy's hated on so much. Some of it warranted some of it not so like he's kind of gotten used to i'm I'm assuming just kind of blocking stuff out so but as far i mean relating this back to the shoe and talking about that a little bit more i mean i'm sure the details will be nice it's jordan brand i'm one of the few jordan brand shoe lines so they normally put out some pretty good stuff whenever they you know do launch shoes they just got him and zion right now that are putting out uh signature lines you got of course like jason tatum and luca have already signed on there but Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'll be interested to check it out. Obviously, we'll be able to check it out and kind of compare it to last year's model, which I wasn't bad either. But they're decent. They're they, okay. The colorways are always pretty fun for him because yeah. you know, for Russell Westbrook, he loves he loves the out there stuff. So normally, his even his first few colorways never end up being like white black. Like last year, I think it was like some type of upbringing or something like that with like leopard and like cheetah print and tiger print and all this yeah. different type of stuff on there. And and then like years ago, it was like his. All it had like feature colors from all of his jerseys that he'd worn growing up. So he's definitely very family family focused and stuff like that. So I mean, it's a, you know not a not a bad look. You can't knock it for sure. But all right, moving on to the last article of this episode, Landon. What do we got? All right, so I gotta ask, which Pata Nike Air Max One colorway is the best? So a black colorway for the Pata Nike Air Max One, the Wave Collection, is said to be releasing soon, and this will be the fourth edition to this Wave designed by Pata. So I mean, I gotta ask you, these kind of seem to be releasing in like a new colorway, you know, like every other week. We've actually been fortunate enough to cop the first three and get to check those out. So I guess we are about to be going for our fourth. So I mean, you, I know that you kind of struggle telling Air Max ones and nineties apart, but this is an Air Max one. But, uh, you know, what is, what's kind of been your thought about this pack so far, you know, this slight variation to the Air Max, Air Max model, but then just like what the three colorways we've seen so far with the Monarch, the Aqua Noise, the Rush Maroon, and then now this black colorway that could be either completing it or just adding to it. Yeah. I mean, personally, I am a fan of the, the Pata, uh, Nike Air Max 90 slash one. No, uh, <laughs> stop. no, I am. I am a fan of the pot of collabs. I think I think it is really cool that instead of just adding a colorway, they're actually changing up the model a little bit. I do like the waves. I think it kind of freshens up the design. And and personally, out of the colorways that we've gotten right now, it's definitely a toss up between we haven't gotten the black yet, but it's going to be either a toss up between obviously the baby blue or the black. I think those are the definitely the two colorways that stand out the most and Honestly, if you had the choice, I would choose both and then rock the black more often. But then if you want to spice it up, you go with the baby blue. Well, they're not they're not crazy on the resale market. So really, you kind of do have your option to choose both. Right. I mean, I'd say, honestly, my least favorite one is going to be that Rush Maroon that the just most it one? looks kind of like it it's a little shiny. too much. It's a, yeah, it's definitely a different like material. Different definitely a different material. We haven't gotten to see them in hand yet. Yeah, we they're in the mail. They're, they're, they're coming. They're in the mail. They'll be interesting. You can tell that they look different. Yeah. I don't really love the color scheme, but I think the other three are just absolute. Like even the orange one, you didn't really love those. The monarch colorway, the orange brownish, but it is the really nice. Is really nice. The wave design to that upper is really cool. I even saw like a like a teased like green one that like LeBron like tweeted out or something like that. It was like a special like green collab. I think it might have been either with someone else or just like a personal like unreleased. You know those unreleased designs right, whenever they were right. kind of trying to put like a sample or something like that right so i mean i mean but as far as like favorite colorway yeah it's i'm I'm right there with you that aqua 
was like so nice in hand. Super we got nice. to see those, and I'm assuming that this black is going to be really nice too. I love those neutral neutral colors, like you said. Yeah, the I neutral think, color scheme is nice. Yeah, I mean, if I if I had to choose one, I would go black just because I would wear it way more than baby blue. Because in my opinion, like baby blue, it's such a it's such a nice color, and to me, it's going to make the shoe nicer. And if the shoe is that nice, I'm not going to wear it that often. But I will rock the black one way more often, just because just because it's it's neutral, like you said, and then also I, I'm not worried about scuffing up that baby blue. Right. But I, yeah, well, I, I really do like the Pata and Nike collabs. I'm I'm interested to see what's coming next. If it's just gonna be colorway after colorway, are we gonna just see dunks like just, just gonna kill this collab? You know, it's gonna be every so often. 2022 is that what we're gonna do, or is Pata gonna expand? And then this is just a little teaser for Pata and Nike collab. I don't know. I mean, they've yeah. I, I mean, it'll be interesting. They have put out some nice stuff in the past. The one thing with the Air Max model that's nice is that you don't have to worry about like whenever you talk about other hype shoes like Jordans and stuff. Air Maxes don't really crease all that much. It's a comfortable shoe. Oh yeah, that's the one thing with Bill Air Max is like it's honestly a really comfortable shoe, uh -huh. a very fashionable shoe. Obviously, it's one of the like it's one of the like most hype shoes out there. The Air Max Air Max One design. So I mean, I think it could definitely end up you know. Oh, I honestly I wouldn't mind seeing them add more. I think they could almost put out For every sure. colorway of that and it'd For be sure. okay. But but I mean, there's a limit. There's there, definitely a limit. We saw I guess Nike's finding that out with dunks. We saw it with the dunks. They're like, okay, we absolutely killed the market. Now we're gonna be releasing Jordan twos. So, <laughs> hey, on to the next one. Wait, wait, I'm ready for the Jordan. If they're doing it like that, I'm ready for the Jordan three year. I love the Jordan three model. We got Jordan three I'm I'm in years. I mean, Jordan three model is tight. I mean, we'll see. I mean, who knows what Nike's got scheduled for 2022? But it already looks pretty promising. I think they've already released already like the Jordan one lineups already. And it's like you see a bunch pairs. of different stuff. There's a there's, there's a a baby blue pair of Jordan six is coming out. I saw that. It, those are coming out like it's so funny. They're like coming out like in April. They're having to make so many pairs because those things are gonna go crazy. So much better those than Carmine's. Nice. But that's actually gonna wrap up this episode for laced up. Thank you guys for taking some time to watch. But until next episode, peace.